Hi, this is Dr. Cooper, and this is a lesson for the English 101 and English 102 Freshman Composition course. Today's lesson is, what are periodicals, and how to search the databases to find them. Periodicals are any type of publication that is published in a series, or periodically, hence the name. Things like newspapers, magazines, journals, and newsletters are all periodicals, and the articles inside them are periodical articles. There are two types of periodicals. We have popular, and then we have professional. The popular ones are the ones that are more popular, like the newspapers, magazines, and newsletters that you might have delivered to your house on a weekly or monthly basis. Professional periodicals are the professional trade journals and scholarly journals. You are probably familiar with magazines like Time and Newsweek, as well as Vogue, Wired, Essence, and so on. These magazines are referred to as popular magazines. Popular magazines provide general information on topics of interest to a wide audience. The articles are typically written by journalists or writers who may or may not have any expertise in the article's topic. They also have some characteristics that make them easily identifiable in print or online. Articles in popular magazines rarely contain citations or footnotes to sources and undergo a limited editorial review. Popular magazines can be a good source for general information on current topics. Professional trade magazines and journals are aimed at specific professional audiences. The American Psychological Association Monitor, the New England Journal of Medicine, American Scholar, and Science are examples of professional journals. Articles in these publications are often written by practitioners or professionals who have at least some background in or experience with the topics. The articles tend to cover current issues of interest to the profession and may contain terminology familiar to the profession. Professional journals are usually published monthly and they often include citations to source materials. Scholarly or scientific journals present primary accounts of original research or in-depth analysis of a topic. Scholarly journal articles are written by researchers, scholars, or practitioners who are considered experts in their field. The articles are aimed at other researchers or experts, so the language used is often highly technical and may be difficult for an outside or inexperienced researcher to understand. Scholarly journals are also referred to as peer-reviewed, blind peer-reviewed, or refereed journals due to the rigorous review process that articles go through before they are accepted and published by the journal. You can often tell an article is scholarly by the extensive bibliography, the credentials or affiliation of the author, and the inclusion of technical graphs, charts, and diagrams. How do you distinguish different types of journals? Well, as you can see in the chart on the slide, we have a criteria, and as you read down at the criteria where it says who is the intended audience, if the audience is the general public, then that's probably a popular newspaper or magazine. If the intended audience is a member of a trade or profession, then you're probably looking at a professional or trade journal. And then, of course, if the intended audience is researchers and experts, then you might have a scholarly journal. So just go ahead and read down the rest of the items on this slide, pause, and then determine how to distinguish different types of journals by that criteria. Now that we understand what periodicals are, let's talk about where we can find them, and that would be the databases. A database is a collection of information, usually electronically stored. Relevant information can be searched for and retrieved using appropriate terms, dates, and other criteria. For our purposes, consider databases as sources for the full text of articles in magazines, journals, newspapers, or reference materials, as well as images. The GCC library subscribes to these databases, and access is limited to students, faculty, and staff of the college. Databases provide easy access to a wide range of information, from lists of publications to information compiled and organized by the government. Because they are created as repositories of information, they typically provide numerous ways to search the information they contain. To learn more about searching databases, let's examine these questions. What are databases? What types of databases are there? What types of databases can I find on the web? 
how can I decide which database to use, and how can I search a database. All right, let's start with what are databases. Databases are organized electronic records, entries on a particular item, such as a journal article, that you can search and display. Databases vary in the topic they cover and the information they provide. Some databases include publication information and brief descriptions of all articles published in a group of scholarly journals or in a field such as microbiology or American history. Others provide access to the complete text of articles published in certain newspapers and magazines. Databases can be stored on CD-ROM, on the web, or on commercial websites that are accessible only if the library has a subscription. In some cases, you can access a database only from a computer workstation in your school library. In other cases, you can access them from your campus network or on the web. If you have any questions about how to access a database, you can always ask a reference librarian for help. What types of databases are available? The databases you're likely to find in a library or on the web usually contain information about both print and electronic publications. This information is found on records that are similar to those provided by a library's online catalog. Database records typically provide publication information about the author, title, publisher, publication date, and subject of a, of a source. As a research writer, you'll be most interested in many types of databases, including subject databases, bibliographies, full text databases, and citation indexes. Let's start with subject databases. Subject databases provide information about a broad subject, such as education, business, or psychology. The Art Abstracts database, for instance, presents publication information, including author title, publication date, and publisher, and abstracts of works published in the field of art. Subject databases usually don't give access to the full text of articles and research reports they list. So this is a screenshot of databases listed by subject at the GCC library. And as mentioned, some of the databases do only give just the citation information, but most will give you the full text of the articles. Bibliographies, such as the MLA Bibliography and the International Bibliography of Social Sciences, are specialized databases with information about publications in a subject area. They are similar to subject databases. However, they focus more narrowly on a particular field, and they typically provide only publication information, as opposed to brief descriptions or the complete text of the sources they cite. Full text databases such as LexisNexis Academic Universe, the ACM Digital Library, and Electric Library provide the complete text of a document as well as its publication information. These databases are becoming increasingly popular as they provide access to a larger and larger number of publications. Citation indexes track references that authors put in the bibliographies of published papers. They provide a way to search for and analyze the literature in a way not possible through simple keyword topical searching. It also enables users to gather data on the impact of journals as well as assessing particular areas of research activity and publication. This field is called bibliometrics. What can you do with citation indexes? Well, you can find papers that cite earlier papers, as demonstrated in the image. You can find out how many times many papers have been cited. You can also determine which are the best journals in your field, and you can verify old and obscure references. So what types of databases can you find on the web? You'll find a range of databases on the internet. Some of these, such as ERIC, www.eric.ed.gov, are freely available. Most databases on the internet, however, are available by subscription only. Most often, your library will pay a fee that allows its users, meaning the students, to access specific databases. Sometimes the licensing agreement will only allow computers in the library to access the database. In other cases, any computer connected to the campus network can have access, which is the case with our school library. Some of the most useful databases freely available on the internet include the ERIC database, as I mentioned, which contains abstracts and, in some cases, the full text of documents and articles in the field of education. 
Then there is the Fed World Information Network, www.fedworld.gov, which provides access to U.S. government websites and U.S. government documents, databases, and other information products. How can you decide which databases to use? Well, Databases usually focus on a particular area, such as popular magazines, academic journals in a particular field, or information reported during a U.S. government census. Before you consider using a database, ask yourself these questions. Is my subject covered in the database? Some databases cover a specific subject area in depth, while others are more broadly focused. Does the database cover the time period I'm interested in? Many databases, for example, cover only recent publications, often no earlier than 1980, and so may not help you if you're looking for anything older. And for whom is the database designed? If you're considering a particular database, ask yourself whether it covers articles written for an expert audience or a more general audience. Some databases focus on highly technical research and scholarship. Others lead to articles written for a non-specific audience. How can you search a database? Well, searching a database can be done in a variety of ways depending on the database you're using. Let's use the Academic Search Premier as an example. So for a basic search, you basically just type in your keywords in the search box and you hit search. For an advanced search using the same database, the Academic Search Premier, you can click on the advanced search button underneath the search box and you will see that it opens up different options. So on the diagram that you see, the circled orange boxes are added to show you that you can do bullion searches and use bullion phrases that we will learn in class to help narrow the search. You can also use the boxes on the lower left that will help you search just for full text you can decide which time period you want to search within and you can also decide the document type that you are looking for and then on the right you can see that you can limit your search to scholarly peer-reviewed journal articles only or you can type in a publication name periodical name and only search that periodical again you can search the periodical type and then also languages for the different types of articles that you might come up with so you have a lot of different options when you do an advanced search when you're searching a database. We will have a lesson specifically on that later. So that's it for now on searching for periodical articles in the databases.